Is mining profitable in 2020? Many people have given up on mining as it has been taken over by huge mining farms, making fractions of a profit on each miner. But there are still people out there who believe mining can be more than just a hobby. In fact, they think it can be a legitimate income opportunity. Find out what the number one factor in becoming a profitable miner is today and why you might be giving up on it too soon. Let's get it. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the hardest working channel in all of cryptocurrency. If you're new, hit that subscribe button and check the description for links you can use to connect with me. All right, guys, today we are going to jump right into an interview with Seth Estrada from the Mind Your Biz YouTube channel. I've been checking out his videos lately and I was pretty impressed with what I saw. So he asked me if I want to chat about mining on the channel and I said, sure. We don't talk about mining a lot, but there is some benefit to learning more about getting started. Now, let's check out the interview with Seth from Mind Your Biz. Hey, everybody. We are joined with Seth from Mind Your Biz, another YouTube channel. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about some mining. So, really excited. You get excited about mining, right? Uh, yeah. Yes, I do. Probably unnaturally so. It's a little bit unhealthy. But yes. Yeah, that's right. I, I hear mining is unhealthy for the environment. So, that might line up. Is that right? Is that correct? Mm, well, we might have to do sort of a sort of a MythBusters episode on that because <laughs> we also, I mean, you know, we've also got a dependence on all kinds of technologies and right. stuff that are unnecessary and redundant. And you know, should we be, should we be burning gas in our cars, or should we all get Teslas, or should we all just convert all our old cars to electricity? I, I don't know. But mining, that I think industrial I can revolution. Most people, it's not that bad. The industrial yeah. revolution is what really messed us up. And cows. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you, right. sir. Cows. Walking the back. Their methane, their methane, their gas is really bad for the environment. But hey, we like cows. So okay, let's let's move on into mining. Uh, I, I want to talk about uh, you know obviously if anyone's been in cryptocurrency for any stretch of time, they've heard of Bitcoin mining, they've heard of cryptocurrency mining, uh, but a lot of people don't ever really go you know get into that. For people that are kind of sitting on the fence and saying that you know, they may want to get into it, they may not. What would be the, the best steps for someone to get involved with mining? That's a really good question. The first couple of steps that somebody have to take with they want to get into mining is first, take an inventory of what you have lying around. Now, in my case, I'm a little bit of a freak because I, I'm right here in a mining facility, right? So in along with my, my office, but I've got some GPUs sitting around that can be used for mining. If you're a gamer, you probably have equipment like this, or you're researching the latest announcements from NVIDIA or AMD, because they've both got really big announcements for 2020 about new uh, GPU hardware. Uh, but if you're a gamer, you already have that kind of stuff flying around. So take inventory of the PCs, the laptops, the desktops, and especially the GPUs. If you're a, if you're a PC gamer, that you have lying around the hardware that could be used for mining, and then just get it all done on paper. Figure out what do I have and what is it capable of? How powerful is it? The second step would be figure out what kinds of algorithms those GPUs or CPUs are capable of mining, and. If you're not familiar with uh, with what I mean by algorithms that they can mine, I mean hashing algorithms. And you can usually figure that out by going to a website such as whattomine.com. And it'll just show you a, an assortment of different kinds of hardware. And then you'll recognize what you have because you'll see it in the lineup. And then you can select it and it'll kind of just show you. It does this much on say Ethereum and this much on maybe Monero or other coins you may have heard of. And then you'll have a sense for which algorithm it can do. And then that last step, which coins are best based on those algorithms. So that's kind of the, the, the step, those steps. First, figure out what you have, figure out what it can do by way of hashing algorithms, and then figure out which coins that translates into. And then the sort of last step is figure out how much profit that yields per day over the loss of spending on electricity. Yeah, and, and that's the big thing to keep in mind here is, when people are looking at, you know, how many coins they can be bringing in, you also have to look at how that's affecting uh, your power bill. It, it, that's the main, the, the electricity cost that you're spending, that's the main thing that eats into the profit, correct? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, the other stuff, like if you have consumer hardware, like a, a PC that you're using for gaming, you can always resell that later on. But mm -hmm. yeah, you, you can't sell the, the electricity that you burnt 
back to the grid. It's just gone. So you're yeah. stuck with the bill. Yeah, and I, you know, uh, some countries have you know better or more friendly power uh, rates than others. Uh, I know. H- how is it in the United States with uh, our power? Rate? How much does it vary from, you know, maybe city to city? You know, it's it's such a broad range. Actually, if you're in a state like California, which first off, uh, I feel for you. I feel for you. Yeah. I and mean, I went. I I used to live there. I'm not going back. That's just my opinion on it. I mean, none of none of these opinions from this side of the screen, I, I think, reflect the BitBoy Channel. But for me, I'm never going back. And you also pay over 20 cents per kilowatt hour in most larger, more more populous areas of California. It's really not possible to turn a profit mining in those areas of California. You can go to the air quotes flyover states uh, within the central United States. um, And you can go down south into states like Texas, where they've got a really big, uh, they've got a lot of diverse sources of energy for electricity there. Then it's everything from solar to wind to hydroelectric to, uh, of course, uh, you know, petro power, right? So, uh, so coal fired plants and everything else, everything in between. And it's really low cost there. When it gets all the way to somebody's house for the, com- the uh, what is it, not the commercial, but the residential rate for, for power, it winds up being anywhere from one side of the country to, to these really inexpensive sides, anywhere from on, on the high side, like 25 cents per kilowatt hour. And that's how they meter it all the way down to maybe seven or eight. Be really lucky to get that rate. And the national average is somewhere floating around 10 to 12 cents. That's kind of what most people can expect to pay. Yeah, uh, it it's really just, you know, very different, a lot, a lot of variants. Uh, and then I've seen, you know, people, the people that can really make bank, the people that can make the most money uh, are gonna be people that uh, getting free power. <laughs> so if you have free power, now uh, it won't stay free for long. If uh, whoever, someone, your landlord finds out or whoever it is you're getting the free power from, uh, realize you're mining because it can get quite expensive pretty quick. Yeah, but I'll offer you a hack there. One way you can deal with that is if you're renting from not just a landlord, but you're renting from a property management company that has, you know, a uh, hundred or several thousand doors under management, mm. so so to speak. We're in the real estate world; they call them just doors, right? Uh, but if they have several hundred or several thousand doors under management, then it's very possible that they've got just one giant invoice from the power utility, and that the extra cost of you mining in that one little facility maybe maybe it's a rental for your your office right for work or uh, or a rental if you're living in an apartment or something you're, you're doing a rental situation for your your personal living it's very possible that for them that's just drop in the bucket so you never can tell right i mean worth worth exploring yeah absolutely so tell us about uh tell us about mine your dot biz tell us about that well, I appreciate you asking. Mind job is it kind of it came up when I first re-entered the crypto scene. I first heard about crypto and specifically Bitcoin back in like 2012, 2013. Didn't act right. Like I can't pretend to have some backstory now where I was like, oh yeah, actually I was this anon. Like you, you didn't you didn't see me, but I was there on Bitcoin talk. No, nah, I can't. That's <laughs> not me. And I'm, I'm not going to pretend like you know come up with some fake backstory. I heard and I didn't act right. I, I snoozed. And I lost and I felt the FOMO when people who talked to me about crypto in 2013 said, hey, I, you know, I missed out on the Ethereum ICO. They, they weren't sure if they were going to do it. And then when I heard those stories from people who I knew that said they, they felt FOMO and they really felt regret for not picking up Ethereum during the ICO. Well, I said, OK, well, it's profitable to mine in 2016. Maybe I should really start thinking about this because I've, I've built systems and that's not too difficult for me to wrap my head around uh, this this mining concept and building systems specifically for mining. And then in 2017, I realized it was undeniable, right? Like to everybody, yeah. it was undeniable that the market was running up and that I had to act. Um, so end of 2017, I just I looked for the handle and, I, and it just it seemed unreal to me that nobody from the beginning of crypto had taken that that nickname or that handle mind your biz yeah i was like all right look for a domain mind your dot biz and i was like it's domains available too like all right i'm doing this i just jumped in both feet yeah awesome and then yeah go ahead yeah, the website itself though uh the, the mind your dot biz domain went into some cryptocurrency merch that's kind of mining theme kind of gpu mining themed and also privacy oriented very big privacy advocate when it comes to cryptocurrencies like Monero or or others that are privacy focused or privacy technologies like VPNs and Tor, et cetera. All the stuff that we're told we should be more mindful of, 
but it's really easy to ignore because we think, ah, it's for, that's for nerds, right? They'll figure yeah. that out and it's, it's, the average person can't do that. Um, I really think that's important. So now it's sort of a double entendre, right? Like mine your biz as in mine rewards from the crypto, you know, Bitcoin and other blockchain uh, block rewards. But on the other side, um, mind your biz. Like some things should stay private, but it's up to us as individuals to secure that by using technologies like encryption and you know, signal. Um, a poor teenager, he's he got his first phone not that long ago. And the first app I made him install was Signal so his mom and I can text him with encryption. Yeah. So, but yeah, mind your biz is both those things. Yeah, cool. Well, yeah, privacy, privacy coins are, you know, uh, I'm sure it's been a lot of what you bump mines as you've been mining. I mean, because a lot of those are, are, are mineable. Um, and I, I think that they're facing a lot of criticism right now and or they're about to be facing a lot of more regulation than they are, um, which can't really regulate something open source. But regardless, um, you know, they're going to regulate on ramps and off ramps to privacy coins and make it where they're not tradable on exchanges, you know, the, the regular way. So it's kind of scary. And, um, you know, a lot of times we just, you know, just say, well, that's just where we're at, you know, like it's just okay that we're not going to have privacy in our transactions. And that's part of what crypto is about. Um, but it's all, always nice when you kind of have that, uh, you know, contingent of people that are still passionate about that because it, it, it is super important, like privacy, uh, you know, I mean, you don't want people tracking every single thing you do, but yet that's where we're at. So um, yeah, it, let's talk sure. about, what's up? Go ahead. Oh yeah, I was gonna say for sure, like you're saying with privacy uh, as a as a small business owner in the United States, which, you know, rest rest in peace, right? Recent, oh, yeah. uh, recent shutdowns and such have really, uh, say 60% businesses. of businesses They're, closed whenever we open. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, that, I mean, this is a travesty, right? To see that happen in our markets. But for those that are still holding out and still have income, the last thing you'd want to do is give your competitors the advantage of being able to Absolutely. look into your records, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so privacy coins or, or cryptocurrencies that behave like cash, they're pretty darn important as far as yeah. that goes. Yeah, I agree 100%. Uh, well, let's real quick, let's just finish up by talking about uh, your YouTube channel. Uh, if, if there was, or I guess a better way to ask this would be, what kind of content on there uh, would, you know, if somebody thinking about subscribing to your channel, they want to check it out, uh, what kind of content could they look for uh, if they're not really super into mining or maybe don't want to get into mining? Like, is there still value for them? Uh, they're shill your YouTube channel. That's what I want you to do. <laughs> Well, hey, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to do yeah. that. Here's here's how I would chill it to somebody that isn't necessarily interested in mining. I've got interviews with Roger Veer, which I know it's that's like the, having an interview with John McAfee at this point <laughs> in the in the crypto industry. It's just kind of like it's it's expected, sort yeah. of a who's who. However, I've had several anonymous developers or several developers who worked on privacy coins dox themselves on my channel. Mm -hmm. Kind of a, this weird geeky developer whisperer. I talked to really interesting guests that nobody's ever talked to before in the crypto industry, and that some of them are flying really low under the radar. For example, the guy that created the crypto note spec, the author of the crypto note spec, which that doesn't mean anything to you. It's the technology that Monero and all that family of coins are made from. So 350 forks of this coin uh, and, and this technology, this guy made. And almost eight years ago, he worked on it. He was anonymous for years. His first video interview ever on my channel. And he his team sought me out to do that. I don't know why. I'm just I'm just flattered and humbled that they chose me. So that sort of thing happens on my channel. It's really weird. I mean, I'm biased. I think it's a little bit undervalued because of stuff like that. But then I also try to translate some of the technical aspects of mining into common language and help people figure out like what's the best fit for me in terms of uh, educating myself. Like, can I come up with a process to educate myself so that I can start with mining, start with master nodes and things like that and generate passive income in maybe a slightly more technical way and uh, carve out something more for myself within crypto other than just referrals and I mean because we, we've all you know newsflash we all join coinbase we, we can't click on your link right uh, anymore um, so there are other ways to earn rewards inside of crypto and I try to talk about those awesome well you guys make sure to go check out mine your biz on YouTube and check out the domain mine your dot biz uh seth thank you so much for uh joining us we'll put some links down below uh for people to go check those out thank you everybody for watching but now it's your turn do you think you might start mining do you think it can be profitable in today's crypto environment let me know what you think in the comment section down below 
Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe to become a member of the Bit Squad. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. Bit Boy out.